Hello and welcome to today's Swarf and Chips. It's Friday of Mac 2018. Mark and myself are joined by the Manufacturing Technologies Association, also known as the MTA. Gentlemen, for anybody who's watching who doesn't know who you are and what you do, please explain. Thank you very much, Lindsay. No um, the MTA uh, isn't as well known and connected to Mac as we would have, uh, as we would like, and um, it, it, we are owned by the industry, which is our members, and we put on the show for the whole industry. We also collect industry statistics, uh, which you can't get anywhere else. We also provide training grants from our own charities, um, which. Uh, we would like to get that message out much more to our membership and um, we also rep represent the government as you'll hear from Paul later mm -hmm. um, as well as sitting on technical committees both in the UK and Europe for not only machine tools but also for additive manufacturing so really we're very keen that anyone who's not part of it should uh, uh, be part of it. So, so, so what sort of information do, do members actually receive from you? Is it that, that how many machine tools are sold in a given time for instance? Absolutely, but it's much more granular than that. Um, you know, what type of machine tools, even consumable tooling is, uh, is in that uh, data. So uh, we understand that many of our customers, are, or members actually, uh, are only members uh, primarily for the, uh, for the market intelligence that they receive from us. Just before we talk about Mac, industry statistics, where, where, how does that benefit people and your members? Well, Industry statistics, let's face it, sounds really boring. That's why, that's why, that's yeah, why I, I like wanted to get style. out of you. What, what is it? Come so on. Let's, let's just talk about market intelligence. What does market intelligence do for you? It gives you an advantage within the marketplace to behave more intelligently mm -hmm. and therefore grow your business. What's a trade association for? It's there to help our members do more business. Full stop. Yeah, I, I get it more. I get it more. I'm understanding more. And that, it's true. So you're there to help the industry, ultimately. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely right, Lindsay. So we're here at Mac 2018. James, you've built this. You've created this. How? Uh, <laughs> it's taken a long time. We're now on day 12 that we've been on site. Um, I mean, we've got an absolutely phenomenal team, both at the MTA and through all the partners and contractors that we work with. Um, so yeah, we got here 6 p.m. on uh, Easter Monday. Um, it took seven days to build the entire show. Um, everything from you know lifting all this machinery in, and because we're in the new halls, yes. we've changed the way in which we actually install the show. Um, so a lot more stuff was being put in using uh, versa lifts rather than craneage this time. Well, one thing I, I did get told on the on the floor by a, a customer I said, "I love the build up that the MTD produced mm. because I've never seen how I've mm. shown." together you know all I see is the end product like that's it so you know see, seeing that all the boxes and all the bits and you're thinking it's never it's half a day yeah. to go <laughs> yeah. I think that's the thing is even till the Sunday night when the aisle carpets go down you're still looking at it going this isn't the finished product that you get mm. on that Monday morning when you first walk in it's pristine isn't so it? when do you sign off then uh, so we're then still on site now until Monday night so it's three days to take it all out again um, mm. starting from six o'clock tonight wow. Now we know our response that we've got from people, but what response have you got from people having the new halls? Um, I mean, for us, we didn't know what it was going to be. You know, we were very excited. We were hoping that it would give more frontage and spread the visitors out. Thankfully, that's exactly what it has done. Mm. Uh, so we've had a much better flow of traffic through the halls. Mm. Um, and so you've got no pinch points where it's really, really busy, but it's just kept a steady flow for all exhibitors and people really have gone to every corner of every hall. Um, yeah, the, the only negative comment that I've heard or the team has heard is, is the, probably the perception of the numbers, but therefore mm -hmm. there's more space, it's stretched out, the, the aisles are bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you want to respond to that? I mean, for us, we're, we're obviously still waiting for the final numbers to come in. I mean, there's still people walking through the door at the moment. But uh, every day so far we've been up on 2016, so we're expecting a, a higher turnout when we get those final figures in. Stuff. Yeah, from us, uh, having spoken to a few people, just as an example, Open Mind have said they've received more inquiries by Wednesday than they have at any previous Mac show. Uh, Steve Finn from DMG Mori said, this was quite interesting actually, where he was, clearly before, he was right at the front, and he said, yeah, okay, it's changed, but we've got to move with the times, mm -hmm. haven't we? And I think, well, I'm generally getting a good response. What about you, Mark? Yeah, I think overall, with that, speaking to the team just co coming on here, as you know, we, we have a few um, filming crews out and speaking to lots and lots of different people. But the overall feeling is more inquiries, the quality's there, and I should go and 
have a chat with you guys about either being in the ballot because they're in the ballot or, or booking the stand for 2020. Yeah. So, mm. good. Paul, oh, go on then. Sorry, can I just, yeah. a, just add to that uh, because you've prompted a great thought there. Um, we feel our job obviously is to reflect the industry, yeah. and we think that the industry is really forward looking and dynamic. And to have the young people walking around with their parents because of Easter holidays, mm. I think has brought a massively new dimension to the show and, and really is a good demonstration of just how forward looking the industry is at the moment. Okay, um, thank you. Paul, you deal with the political side yes, of yeah, the MTA. Yeah. Talk us through this. Th this must be the easy bit, yeah? <laughs> if <laughs> only. <laughs> um, we've, had, uh, we've had three uh, ministers come and visit the show. We had Brandon Lewis, Cabinet Minister. We had Baroness Fairhead, who's Trade Minister. Uh, and then we had a Treasury Minister, Robert Jenrick, this morning. Um, that's, that's more engagement than we've ever had. Uh, at Mac, and I think it's a really good sign in terms of the government's engagement with manufacturing that you know the, some of the messages that we've been putting out are getting through. Um, we published a report this week uh, that looked at the true impact of manufacturing. You get this sort of perception: oh, manufacturing is only ten percent of the economy; it doesn't matter. It's all services now. We've got a weightless economy. Well, that's nonsense. Um, you know, we're about half of the UK's exports with seventy percent ish. Of, uh, of the R&D spend, and that's because manufacturing matters more to the economy than just that sort of uh, you know, simple 10% figure. So we looked at what the, what the direct composition is, we looked at the indirect, which is the supply chain uh, into manufacturing, and then we looked at the induced uh, impact of manufacturing, and that's what happens when manufacturers and people who work in manufacturers go out and spend that money that they're earning in their companies. And then, you know, that, that, that was sort of looking uh, to push the uh, the impact of the uh, of, uh, of the GDP, or the impact of manufacturing on GDP, mm. up to sort of twenty three percent, it's a quarter of the economy, yeah. and actually seven and a half million jobs. So, do you, do you think that by producing this report, mm -hmm. and industry is probably uh, certainly better than it has been for a, a long time in our industry? Do you yeah. think you have a stronger chance of actually getting it a little bit further up the ladder to be really challenged? Uh, well, I certainly hope. I, cer I certainly hope so, Mark. And you know, we've I've just come out you know, about an hour ago uh, from a round table with Robert Jenry, the Treasury Minister, which we were discussing these figures. Yeah. And you know, it's a they're part of a conversation that's happening now about how important manufacturing is, yeah. um, and you know, the ability to take government ministers who you know don't do you know their day jobs aren't in manufacturing businesses, but to take them around somewhere like Mac, and to so you know. There's that bit of technology. It does that. It enables this customer to do that. I mean, I was on a, I was on a, a stand um, earlier in the week showing somebody around, and um, the the uh, uh, the company was able to talk about how they'd helped uh, a relatively small company that had been very focused on the North Sea to completely change their uh, the way they were making the product, to completely you know alter the business, and actually now refocus the company towards export. So they're now into the global oil and gas market rather than just being a, 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 a smaller supplier into the North Sea. That is the sort of difference that manufacturing technology and getting the manufacturing technology right mm. makes to manufacturing. Maybe controversial, Brexit, don't like using mm -hmm. it, okay, but do you think that's made a difference to, to the industry and the government to look at uh, manufacturing? To be honest, I think actually we've not heard a lot about Brexit this week because the industry has been doing very well. Yeah. You know, we're, 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 we're pretty buoyant. Um, I think that it's a, you know, Brexit's a big topic, it's a difficult topic, uh, and it's got lots and lots of different facets. But the, the very important thing that manufacturers are saying is, do you know what, we've actually just got to get on. Yeah. We've got to get on. Yeah. We can't wait yeah. until the outcome of some negotiations two years yeah. down the line we need to invest now Keeping into those our businesses. spindles turning, yeah. exactly. as we yeah. always say. Yeah. James, how does the show reflect on the industry? I think you'll, thanks to uh, a, a big part of MTD's coverage, which mm -hmm. we're really uh, grateful for, because it's created a huge buzz. As Paul said, the industry at the moment is in a strong position, but the move to the new halls um, and the way that we've laid the whole thing out so that the, the flow and the, the whole of the industry is presented to, to the visitor. Um, 
you know, we're we're really delighted. Actually, uh, I don't know what you think, but we're. Oh, really we're it's well, so impressive. Firstly, I, I should say we're we're just maybe a, a couple of faces on MC. We have a mm. big, big team, and, and a lot oh, of people yeah. in this hall have probably seen that, and the visitors, and mm. you know, we've had a lot of uh, you know people actually having selfies with us, taking photographs when we're filming. So there is a big team, but very much appreciate the comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now. Tom, I've got a question for you because you've been very busy as well. We've spoken, a, a few, I've got a few questions actually, but women in manufacturing, can you talk us through this? Because I personally did a publication yeah. on this. Um, can you talk us and explain more? Yeah, well, I, I, I saw you, you covered it earlier in the week, you know, speaking with Maya Foster and, mm -hmm. and, and the feature you did in your magazine is a perfect example of that. Um, we've got our education development offering within the MTA to encourage more people to come in the industry, and that's everybody, but specifically w women in engineering is uh, really big. This, this morning we had um, Siemens Sea Women kind of uh, talk in the education development zone. Yes. Um, we've had thousands of kids coming through, but what you want to see is give positive role models and like seeing yourself going around and speaking to people like Maya Foster, mm. you're giving fair representation of the industry and there is actually a lot of women within yeah. manufacturing and engineering mm. that you don't necessarily see. As Maya said in her interview, there's a lot of people behind the scenes who are making the plans for these stands, yes. making sure the logistics are sorted, making sure the design is sorted. It's making people realise that there is different routes into engineering and manufacturing. It's not just about the machines, it's, it's about the, 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 well, it's multifaceted, be it the marketing, be it the work in the office, be it um, programming, it's, you know, there's so many things. Positions yeah. for the mm. women to yeah, do. Yeah. How do you market a show? Because naturally it's not tangible, it's the future, you don't know, you know, there's nothing to hold, so what, what, what do you do here? Well, I, I've, with this week I've been trying to get a hell of a lot of shots of the show and I think I've passed you guys on the aisles about a million times. <laughs> yes. so I'm, I'm hooking around a camera and a microphone just the same as yes. you guys. We need to get out there and speak to the exhibitors because you know, third party advocacy is the best way to do it. I can tell you all day how great Mac is, but the, what, what does that mean mm. to the price of eggs? It, it's what the people on the floor that really matters. You want to be hearing the stories that our exhibitors are telling, and you want to have a compelling narrative throughout it, and that's what we've tried to do. From our first press launch back at Ben Ainsley Racing yeah. two years ago, to him coming and opening the show, mm. to our press launch, which you guys have been at all of them, so thank you yeah. for that support, that's to right. Factory 2050, and having uh, the low cost uh, digitalization solutions and you know making SMEs think how you can get into industry for technology without spending a lot of money. The, all of these things make up a, a, a full picture mm -hmm. and I think we've seen this week, with, we've had the BBC come this yeah. week and we've worked really hard, get live, mm -hmm. live broadcast uh, yeah. th on, on Tuesday morning but I think it, all of these things are reflecting good on what we're doing and you guys do a great job, but, but sometimes we're preaching to, the convert, preaching to the converted. We need the mainstream media, like Paul's getting the government mm -hmm. engaged and everything else. Yeah. We need everybody to take notice of what we do and go, let me neck. We still do make stuff here, yeah. and we're damn good at it. So and Everything you do, you need a tool. Exactly. Everything yeah. you do, you need a tool. My last question to you then, maybe for you, James. 2020, what does the future hold? Um, all being well, obviously it's, it's, it's going to be depend to a large extent on the state of the market. But the way we're taking bookings this morning, we are way up on uh, the bookings we took mm -hmm. at 2016. It seems so strong. I think the enthusiasm uh, for how the new layout has, has uh, been received, we're just absolutely delighted. Mm -hmm. And as I say, because we're owned by the industry, it's down to the industry. Yeah. All we do, as you say, you're you're a small part of a big team. It's just the same for us, except our team is the industry, mm -hmm. and the amount of commitment and investment they've put into those stands. One other anecdotal comment that I heard: uh, somebody came here after going to two trade shows in Germany, which are renowned to be the highest quality shows, particularly in our marketplace. And they said that this Mac was better than the two they saw in Germany. Uh, and for those exhibitors that probably uh, do not understand the process of, of, of booking the ballot, uh, obviously we do, but could you explain to the audience how that works in reference to the ballot and also the stand sales? Can so I hand that to you? Most well, I see past. Yeah, so we have, um, there's two sections of the hall. There's a balloted area and a, a space area that's available to book yeah. at the moment. Um, so on Wednesday morning we opened up sales, um, obviously we spoke on Wednesday evening mm -hmm. um, about how they were going. Um, so you've effectively got uh, those areas are available now, so if people jump onto the MAC website we'll have that floor plan live very soon. 
um, and then uh, the ballots will take place at the end of uh, where are we now? So it'll be September and October. Okay. Um, so people can apply. Again, we'll send out application forms to those that previously exhibited. They're available from our website, and you apply for space um, and pick which stands you want, and then we um, we we do the ballot and allocate on that basis. Okay, Mark, mm -hmm. you had a good Mac. Um, Nineteen ninety. Two was my first Mac. So obviously, a lot changes. Obviously, the halls have changed, but I've never seen it as busy. If I'm honest with you, uh, very good comments. And to be fair, I want to change my shoes now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've yeah, had a good I think show. we all yeah. do. We've had a wonderful Mac 2018. Here is our highlights. Welcome to Mac 2018. In a few short moments, um, we're going to be interviewing Sir Ben Ainsley, who's doing the grand opening of Mac 2018. You might be able to see him behind me, four-time Olympic gold medalist. Why is Mac so important to you? The America's Cup, for those that don't know, is really the ultimate in design and engineering. Ian, we're on the Mazak stand this morning. It's Monday. We're obviously going to be here most of the day. but. Why should engineers come and look at what you're talking about here on the laser side from Mazak? Okay, yeah, we're stood in front of the uh, Mazak DDL 3015 4 kilowatt machine. It's a sheet metal profiling machine, so anyone who uses sheet metal in their factory or any parts that they make will be interested in this machine. We're going to look at this VTC 800 that's on show here. Uh, firstly, what is this machine? Well, this machine is uh, a fixed bed machine with a travelling column, so it moves up and down in the column in the X, Y and Z. Um, the machine itself was manufactured and built in the UK. It's actually designed in the UK and it's probably our flagship machine in terms of what we build in the UK facility as well. What we show here at the Mac 2018, it's the smaller version of what we've shown at the EMO. So we also included here our digital path of digitization. That means we're showing all of our solutions we could provide all around the machine. This is the premiere of the NLX 2500 with this particular automation system. What is it that makes it so new? I mentioned uh, to a number of customers, this uh, is a solid base that we've uh, generated. We've made it a lot more compact. Uh, we've added a few more to the size uh, range of uh, automations that we have. So we start off with a five kilo, plus a, uh, two five kilo billet, billet. Uh, go all the way up to 30 kilo. This is some machine here, this DMC80. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, yeah, this, this model. Okay, well this is the duo block. Um, we've exhibited the duo block a few times, but this is now the generation four. Uh, we started off with a hide in, and then we went from always evolving our dual bot machines. But this machine has got a pallet which makes it the DMC, 800 in the X axis, uh, the smallest of the range, but also we have the FD technology which gives us turning. Uh, this is John Hyde from John Hyde Engineering and I just want to talk to John about his experience uh, and history with Mazak as a company. We chose Mazak having recognised that we could no longer compete on our old NC machines. We simply couldn't get any new work because they were too slow and they weren't accurate enough. So we uh, took the double or quits decision, put everything we had into a new FMS. We wanted automation, we wanted no setup times. I am on the NCMT stand with the Managing Director, Dave Burley, having a nice cup of coffee. How are you doing, Dave? Yeah, very well, thank you. It's been a great show so far. We're representing some global brands, Akuma, Makino. We also represent Blue Photon and also Mekoff, an Italian machine tool builder. The whole idea behind this demo here is to show off the skiving capability of the Akuma U3000, both internal and external gears, 
um, and it's showing it on both spindles on this machine here. One of the things we're going to talk to you about today is this brand new Akuma Genos M460V uh, five axis machine. Now, how old is this model now? Because it's, it's, it's only recently been launched, hasn't it? Yeah, this, this version has very recently been launched. It, they, they took it from the original MU model, which uh, they which was made to order, and they packaged it all into this, this Genos M460 machine, So, which brings down the price. Um, so in this demonstration, we're showing prime turning and volume turning. Um, so using both sides of the tools to take rapid cuts. Yeah, this one, the Makino uses the uh, Fanet drives and the interface with the Fanet, um, the parameter settings from Super GI that Makino developed to give this machine outstanding performance. We've got a EDM wire machine and a die sinker. Uh, on the die sinker, we're showing seal slot machining. Uh, the machine has a very high uh, Z, 1.5G. Um, we're also showing the blue photon fixturing, which allows us to get all, to all six faces of a, of a component. Paul has just bought a new machine from Star. So, Paul, what machine have you bought and why? It's a SR20J. Uh, we bought it predominantly because we've got a huge influx of orders and they can deliver the machine on Wednesday, installing it at the weekend, so it'll be up and running in a week. Lee, why are you here on the Star Stand? Oh, I've come to see Star Stand, see, what, see what's new, see what else is coming out and just discuss with some of the guys some of the jobs we've just been doing for them. So what's this then? This is a, a job we've just, just completed. We used to do it in various operations and now we're getting out in one operation straight off the machine. So, so I'm here with Brian Bartlett from IMI Precision Engineering in Paul and also Matt who's one of the sales managers from Star. So why are we here? Well, this gentleman wanted to come and thank me today, so I'll let him explain more. <laughs> yeah, so I turned up today just to, just to come along and see Matt and I obviously have a look at the great machines that Star uh, have on offer. Uh, they sold me a machine in uh, October 2017. Uh, we had a few teething problems with all new machines that, that, that you install. We've overcome them very quickly with the support we had from Star. Uh, and what Star actually did uh, was help us reduce our cycle times. We have some high volume products that so we needed to reduce our cycles. Now, Ashley, you've got a couple of star machines, don't you? How are you finding them? Yeah, very good, yes. Yep. So why do you enjoy using the star machine? User-friendly, easy to use, um, and they run 24-7. We used to have a 30-year-old star sliding head, and uh, some of the components that we used to make used to take nearly three minutes to make, and we've just done a batch of the same components, and we've got it down to 19 seconds. The star has enabled us to uh, make um, products which we had previously bought mainly from Asia. So uh, we've repatriated a lot of product and um, our first purchase has really been a, a remarkable success. So. Jake? I'm, uh, I run the star. And oh well that's perfect you run the star so I bet you've got quite an influence over the purchase of the machine. Yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 100% and what do you think about when you run it you know when you're running the star do you like the machine is yeah, it user-friendly? Easy to use. Easy to use. Um, yeah. 